Welcome to Tech Links with seven connections. We link with easy to understand science. Technology connects origins with our everyday tech objects today. Our high-tech present links to the emerging AI-enabled future. The urgency is that as tech becomes smarter, we need to understand the science inside or risk being replaced by cyber-sentient robots. Without light, I see only darkness. With science, we apply light to improve our lives. Welcome to Tech Links of Light. Our sun is huge. A million Earths would fit inside your sun. The sun is the source of most of the life giving light on Earth. Deep inside suns, atoms combine. H plus H becomes HE. Heat and light are given off. Only half of the Earth gets sunlight at one time. Our light bulbs bring light to dark spaces. Today, light connects through time. From the sunshine to our digital screens. Let's start this true story with night lights. 1. Lamps In the past, people burned wood to cook food and bring light to night. But, fires take lots of fuel. Next, Romans used small lamps to burn plant oils to light rooms. Later, lamps used whale oil too. People also used stinky candles made from animal fat. Later, people learned how to get petroleum oil from the ground. Kerosene is the next fuel to light home lamps. Candles are also made from oil. But lamps and candles are not bright enough for public spaces. 2. Carbon Coal fuels factory fires. People learn that heating coal gives off a gas that can be burned for light. Coal gas lights homes, stages, and city streets. Lamp lighters have to nightly light the street lamps. Making coal gas gives off coal tar. It's used to make new dyes that color our clothes. Later, carbon rocks called lime are heated to make light in theaters. Also, bright arcs are used in seashore lighthouses. They prevent ships from crashing into rocks. Arc lights call for Batman too. Next, carbon threads shine. 3. Electric Light These guys invent light bulbs powered by electricity. Electricity makes the thin filament so hot it glows. Light bulbs and switches spread around the world. Next, improved fluorescent light bulbs are invented. Later, using chip technology, cool LED are invented. Today, colorful electric LEDs are everywhere. Now, let's get back to our story and draw with light. 4. Light Writer This guy sees how silver briefly captures light to make fuzzy pictures. He calls them shadow grounds. They quickly fade away in light. These guys use chemicals to keep photographs from fading. People, the shoebox size cameras go crazy taking pictures around the world. Next, this guy makes rolls of film out of silver and celluloid plastic. He makes cameras easier to use. At this time, Film has to be developed. Photos are printed onto paper to see the pictures. Later, digital sensors and chips capture light and turn them into digital pictures. Today, people take selfies in so many pictures that we share worldwide. Video is just taking over 20 pictures a second. Next, more light enables us to watch movies. TV 
low points. High digital movies are made by millions of glow points called pixels. Each pixel is made of three separate R, G, B points. In old CRT TVs, streams of electrons called by magnets scan across the back of the TV screen to make RGB pixels glow. In LCD TVs, different amounts of white LED backlight flow through the LCDs to make screen pixels glow. In OLED OLED TVs, each point glows by itself. Wow! Computer chips control how much electricity goes to each RGB glow point. This varies from 0 for black to 255 for bright R, G, or B. TV pictures are actually blended color points of RGB light that change or refresh over 100 times per second. Next, life glows. 6. Life lights. Some life can make its own light. Bio-looms work like this. In special cells called photocytes, two cool chemicals and oxygen mix together. Like in LEDs, electrons flow from higher to lower energy orbits. Light is given off. Some plants like these mushrooms glow in the dark. Glow worms use light to bring bugs to them for dinner. Fireflies make light to find love. Dark seas are full of creatures that can make their own light too. This includes waves of glowing algae. Light helps some life just stay alive. Lights send the message, Don't eat me or you will get sick. People use light too. 7. Digital Screens Millions of light points enable digital screens where people and machines interact. Smart TV screens entertain us. We also get widescreen access to the internet and the World Wide Web. With computer screens, we see our real-time digital contents as we create them. As a caution on priorities, we live in a world where most people have smartphones than have flushing toilets. Hmm. Connected smartphones with pocket screens help to educate as well as entertain us. We also talk with online chatbots and our IoT objects via tactile touchscreens. Screen lights are our interface between our real and computer worlds. With tech, may we enlighten our lives and not lose them in cyber playlands. To close, we have life because of sunlight. Next, people use carbon fuels in lamps to bring light to the night. People also discover chemicals that enable light to write pictures. Later, people switch on lots of electric light bulbs to make night bright. Next, home TVs with millions of light points paint moving pictures that entertain and inform us. In nature, some life makes its own light too. Wow! From sunshine to digital screens. The light of science enlightens our lives. With tools, hands work, but weakly. With science, we build machines to harness our creativities. Welcome to Tech Links, Cutting Wedges. Our ancestors survived because of cutting wedges shaped tools. Indeed, each step in human progress, from caves to computers, is enabled by inventing better tools. With science, people progress from stone to bronze and then iron tools. When we see everyday objects, May we wonder at the tools used to make them. Simple wedges connect through time to our complex technologies today. Let's start our true story with V-shaped rocks. 1. Stone Wedges Long ago, people put V-shaped stones on wood handles to make axes. Axes 
pieces chop wood to make our homes and get fuel to cook our food. Next, people chip rocks to make large spear points. Cleverly, people work together to hunt big animals. Also, people chip rocks to make short arrowheads. Bows launch the missile like arrows to hunt small animals. Our ancestors used these axes to make boats to get around. Later, people make wedge-shaped tools to plow soil, plant seeds, and kill weeds. People throughout time turn wedges into weapons too. Over time, people discovered different metals for tools. Egyptians used bronze tools to make pyramids. Later, stronger tools are made. Next, wedges shape wood. 2. Cut wood. Metal tools with sharp wedge edges make wooden parts. People use springy poles for power to turn round parts like wooden wine screws. Also, Wedge-shaped saws turn trees into lumber. People use straight wedge edge tools to make flat pieces of wood like tables and benches. In the past, wedge tip tools make wooden homes that put roofs over our relatives' heads. Before cars, horses pull humans in wooden carts and carriages. In the 1500s, wooden ships enable the human age of exploration. 500 years later, the first airplanes fly. They are mostly made of wood and cloth. 3. Metal Shapes Over time, people invent better wedge-shaped tools to make more precise metal parts. People cut spiral wedges on long metal cylinders to make accurate screws. Screws are winding wedges. With precise lead screws, people make better metal lathes. Strong, sharp, wedge-cutting tools turn round metal parts. People make metal tools that cut precise flat shapes called planes. These tools cut teeth into metal gears for clocks. These spiral tools called mills make many different shapes. Special whetstones and grinding wheels with very tiny hard wedge-shaped grains sharpen tools. Next, we energize wedges. 4. Power Wedges Powered machines move web-shaped tools to make parts that people use. In the past, this machine tool cuts cannon bores. It also makes accurate cylinders for steam engines that power an industrial revolution. Today, metal lathes make nuts and screws that hold parts together. Also, lathes make precise pistons for cars. Car engine parts must be precisely flat. Our world moves with gears made by wedge-shaped tools. Electricity powers wedge-tipped mill tools that shape airplane parts like these wing spars. Tools have to be carefully controlled to make quantities of quality parts. 5. Controlled Cutters At first, skilled people control the machine tools to make parts. Next, people invent motors to move tools. They are controlled by numbers and math. People program these early machines to punch tapes. When computers are improved, people write software to control the machine tools. Today, computer-controlled machines have many web-shaped cutting tools. Simply said, without wedge tools, there will be no cars or most of the everyday objects we use. People are currently working on ways for computer machine tools to self-learn how to make parts. Next, 
more wedges. 6. Everyday wedges Wedge-shaped objects are all around us. Our teeth are wedges. Gear teeth are too. These garden hand tools are wedges. Can openers, scissors, and zippers use wedges too. Like water pumps, wedge-shaped ship propellers push water backwards. This pushes ships forward. Our complex high-tech world has objects made by simple, wedge-shaped tools, which leads us to wedges on wings. 7. Airplane Edges The first planes have propellers that are twisting, turning wedges. They cut through the air and push it back to thrust the plane forward. Propeller or prop planes have flat, straight wings. Wings have wedge-shaped cross sections. This causes air pressure to push the planes up. This is called lift. Today, jet engines have fan blades. Can you guess their shape? Yup! Wedges! They push together or compress air into the engine. More air or oxygen causes the fuel to burn better. Why do jets have wedge-shaped wings? Powerful jet engines will break flat wings. Jet engines are so powerful that they would make flat wings fall apart. Thankfully, air flows smoothly over the swept back wedge-shaped wings with jet engines. People in computers steer planes with parts that have wedge-shaped cross sections. On airplanes, the important front face is called the leading edge. The idiom, cutting or leading edge, means the latest in technology. To close, ancient people use sharp rock wedges for axes and arrows. Next, sharp metal tools cut wood for our homes, carts, and ships. Later, stronger tools shape metal parts too. These are examples of wedges that are around me. Today, computers control machines with wedge tools that make many of my high-tech objects. Wedge-shaped tools make many airplane parts too. Jet planes are even wedge-shaped. When we know about wedges, we better understand the science inside the cutting-edge tech of our world today. Without books, brains lack in learning. With science, we understand and explain our changing world. Welcome to Tech Links! From this to that. Let's look at the links of where objects come from to better understand our lives today. This true story shows how tech connects from baas to books. Long ago, the first people wear animal skins. Bit itchy that, later people noticed that sheep are comfy in their warm coats while humans are cold. By chance, sheep walk by thistles. Shepherds noticed the wool fibers. People get the idea to spin fibers into threads. Next, people invent simple looms to weave threads into wool cloth. For thousands of years, people wear wool clothes. Later, people see that flax plants have fibers. People learn how to spin flax into threads. Next, people weave linen cloth for clothes. People first weave linen Tens of thousands of years ago. Wow! Later, the Egyptians wear linen when they make the pyramids. Also, Greek thinkers wear linen. The Romans wear linen too. Europeans in the Middle Ages wear linen too. Suddenly, a new loom comes to Europe from Muslim Spain. 
New foot pedals and hand shuttles help people make cloth faster and cheaper. But this causes a problem. Workers using whorls can't make threads fast enough for the weavers. Luckily, the spinning wheel comes to Europe from China. More flex threads and cloth make slower cost linen clothes. Over time, all that linen that people wear wears out. There are lots of linen rags. The worn out linen rags are smashed, pulverized, and steered. The linen fiber soup is spread thin onto screens. Wine press screws help press out the water to make paper. Now, people have lots of cheap linen paper about. This is a time when human scribes hand write one book, one copy at a time. It takes months to copy one book. Books are written on animal skins called parchment. Parchment is made like this. Get the animal skin. Soak. Scrape it. Stretch. And dry it. Prep the surface. It takes hundreds of animal skins to make one book. Like this Bible copy. Plentiful cheap paper begins to replace expensive parchment. Scribes begin to make more books when disaster strikes. Rats with fleas from trading ships spread the plague disease. One in three people die. When the plague is over, there is a need for books and legal documents. But there are not enough scribes to handwrite the books. There is plenty of linen paper though. In an aha moment, this guy, Goldsmith Gutenberg, has an idea. He knows how to make rings and things. He makes special molds. He casts removable type letters like this. He groups the interchangeable individual letters into words and sentences. He puts ink onto the letters. He puts paper on top. Next, he presses it all together. Voila! The printed page. Printing makes books faster and cheaper. No animals are needed either. Before the printing press, 99 out of 100 people in the world cannot read. In its first 100 years, people used printing presses to print 20 million books. Amazingly, books spread knowledge around the globe. To see the impact of printed books on our world, let's compare. A handwritten book is like a dim candle in a dark room for one person. Mass-produced books are like sunlight shining on the world. Bountiful books enable the Renaissance and Enlightenment. Today, connected online books continue to educate and enhance our lives. To close, wow! Long ago, People wear wool. People invent better machines to make linen clothes. People use the rags to make linen paper. Surprise! After the plague, there are not enough writers. This guy invents a printing machine. Worldwide, the number of books and readers skyrockets. Amazing! From buzz to books in seven links, Tech Connects change our world. Without power, muscles live within limits. With science, we energize machines to move ourselves in our world. Welcome to Tech Links with steam power. From this to these. This is the true story where the sands of time, or at least sand, becomes glass. 
with coal-fueled fires that help replace brass objects with iron ones, where heated water becomes steam that powers a revolution. There are links from the past to our present with tech objects. From windows to steam-powered wheels, let's start with the see-through substance. 1. Pipe windows. Glass is made by melting these together with lots of heat. The Roman blows glass on a pipe to make lots of cups, bottles, and bowls. Later, people learned to blow a big glass bubble and spin it. The flat, round glass is cut into small shapes for windows. Next, Hot, huge cylinders of blown glass make larger windows. Today, glass is made by floating on hot tin. But that is a different story. Hundreds of years ago, glass workers drink beer to keep cool. Also, it helps the workers not to get sick from the smoky fires that melt glass. How is the beer made? 2. Brewer Pots Beer makers mix these together in giant copper vats. Next, the mash is boiled. Later, finished beer is put into glass bottles. At first, the beer and glass bottle makers use wood as fuel. In Europe, so many people burn wood. The forests are about to run out of trees. Many businesses like beer and bottle makers start using coal as fuel. Where did this coal come from? 3. Peat Coal Hundreds of millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, massive plants grow over the hot earth. When the huge plants die, they pile up on top of each other in layers called peat. For peat's sake, over time, the layers of plant peat get covered up with sand. With heat, pressure, and time, the peat turns into coal. Much, much later, people find that they can burn the coal for fuel. As coal miners dig deeper and deeper into the earth, there is a big problem. The mines flood with water. 4. Steam Pumps This guy comes up with an idea to fix the flooded mines. He burns coal in a beer brewer's boiler to get steam. He uses steam to push up one side. The other side is linked to a piston that drives a pump to push water out of mines. The steam pump works with a seesaw motion. The pump works okay, but burns lots of coal. The steam pump sells pretty well. Many mine owners buy them, but there's a problem. Pump cylinders are made out of expensive brass. A cheaper and stronger material is needed. 5. Iron Products This guy turns coal into coke and makes iron products. He makes lots of pots and other things out of iron. He also makes steam pump cylinders out of iron. For about 50 years, steam pumps drive water out of deep mines. This university has a model of the steam pump to teach students. One day, the pump model breaks. The broken model is given to the university's repairman. 6. Steam Power While he fixes the model, he notices something. The steam pump uses one cylinder for both the hot and cold cycles. This wastes a lot of energy. Aha! One brilliant idea is to add another cylinder to separate the hot and cold. Watt's new steam engine costs less to run but is more powerful than the steam pump. The new steam engines sell well. Bolton and Watt improve their engines. They make the back and forth piston turn a round wheel. The turning motion is very useful for businesses like textile and potteries. Steam engines power so many factories, they cause an industrial revolution. But powerful steam engines can do more. 7. Wheels Propel 
This guide gets the idea to make a steam engine push iron train wheels. His first trial fails as the L-shaped iron rails break and the boiler leaks. He does get his train working. Paying passengers can get a short ride on a circle track at a steam circus. Later, there's a competition to be the world's first commercial train. The race is in England on train tracks between these two cities. This guy and his train named Rocket win the race. Next, trains are very successful. Soon, trains and tracks spread throughout England and Europe. Later, steam engine trains spread across continents and across the world. Steam also powers ships and some of the first cars. Steam power is still important to our world too. Nowadays, other types of engines power our modern people movers. Cars, trains, and planes. Steam still makes our coffee and cooks much of our food. But steam is still powerful today too. Steam generators make lots of world's electricity. Here are examples. To close, glass windows are once made by people with blowpipes. Hot glass workers drink beer to keep cool. Brewers make beer in steaming hot boilers. Steam pumps use boilers to push water out of flooded mines. Next, Bolton and Watt make steam engines which power factories. In the past, steam boilers on wheels push trains around the globe. Today, steam still makes much of the energy for our modern world. When we see through glass, we connect through time with power from windows to wheels. Without production, we produce only a few products. With science, we build from scarcity to a surplus of everyday objects. Welcome to Tech Links! From this to these. We look at object origins to better understand our lives today. This is the true tale about factories. Also, how tech connects from play soldiers to modern cars. Our story starts 2,000 plus years ago. At this time, China is a bunch of different warring kingdoms, each with a separate warlord king. This guy, Chi Chi Wang, wants to unite China under one king or emperor, him of course. He builds factories to hand make weapons like bows and arrows, spears and swords. His factories make enough weapons to equip his 100,000 soldiers. Emperor Qin conquers the whole country. He names the united country after himself, China. He likes being top king so much, he wants to keep it forever. He has a plan to rule in the afterlife too. He builds more factories to hand make 10,000 clay soldiers and weapons. It is because of these clay soldiers that we know about his ancient army. As for Emperor Qin, he drinks what he thinks is an elixir of eternal life. It has mercury in it. It slowly kills him. In China, factories continue to make silks and ceramics. China ships them all over the world. Chinese ceramics are expensive because they are shipped around the world. Next, people in Europe copy making clay ceramics. Later, in England, this guy uses science to figure out how to make his own ceramics at a less cost.
He experiments what materials to use. Also, how to control oven heat consistently. He makes plates, dinnerware, and popular tea sets. He also makes these that he names after himself. Today, in the West, we still call clay ceramics China after where they first came from. Next, at a time when most things like buns are made one by one by human hands, in France, this guy gets an idea. Painfully, he has gun parts handmade that are all the same size. This is called interchangeable parts. He puts on a show for crowds as he assembles random gun parts together. At least one person is impressed. He is the U.S. ambassador to France, named Thomas Jefferson. Suddenly, in France, the revolution happens. Heads roll! The French lose interest in Blank's idea. Mr. Jefferson, who later becomes President Jefferson, takes the idea of changeable parts to the USA. It takes years, but this guy makes 10,000 muskets. With help from water-powered machines, the handmade gun parts are nearly the same size. At this time, England is making lots of wooden ships to fight this guy. There is a problem. Not enough fully blocks to move the cloth sails for the ships. This guy gets the idea to make a production line to make the wooden pulley blocks. This guy makes the machines. Next, 100,000 pulleys are made per year. Automation impacts people at the pulley factory. 10 people in machines replace 110 skilled workers. Next, based on the success of the pulley block factory, more machine tools are made. These machine tools make more machines. These machines enable cloth factories. These machines prepare the cotton. These machines, called spinning mules, spin threads. Other powered machines weave lots of cloth. Machines like these make products better and cheaper, but they cost the jobs and change lifestyles of cottage workers. Machine tools also make steam engines. Steam engines power machines in factories. The numbers of factories explode. There is a revolution of changes as workers move from farms in small villages to factories in crowded cities. This guy makes a factory to make hundreds of thousands of blocks. This guy builds factories to make sewing machines. Steam engines also power trains. Trains and rails are made in factories. Later, factories also build equipment to make and to distribute electricity. Electric motors power more machines and factories. This guy designs a simple but effective car after many tries. He calls it the Model T. Car parts are made all the same size. He uses machine tools in a moving assembly line to make lots and lots of cars. He pays his workers a fair wage. Workers can afford to buy the cars they make. In Ford's factory, 30,000 machines help people make 15 million cars in 20 years. Ford's efficient production line lowers the price of a car from $850 to $360. Soon, there are lots of factories that make cars and all kinds of other objects. Today, factories make almost all of our everyday things. Factories shape and bake clay ceramics. 
They cut and sew the clothes I wear. Factories process and pack the food I eat. They put together smartphones for my calls, selfies, and searches. Factories still assemble autos too. Aha! People and machines in factories make most of the objects around me. To close? Wow! From clay to cars in seven steps. Ancient clay soldiers in China show us how early factories equipped huge ancient armies. Next, Chinese factories make lots of ceramics called China. They are traded around the world. Later, the English make ceramics. New science and production steps are discovered. Then, this guy demos interchangeable parts. But guillotines stop production progress in this country. President Jefferson takes the ideas to the USA to make muskets. Then, England invents new machine tools. First to make pulleys for ships. Next, the powered, controlled machines turn tons of cotton into cloth. These are sold around the world. Later, the Ford factory uses machines, same size parts, and a moving assembly line to make millions of cars. With our modern factories, we connect where things come from to better understand our tech objects today. Without bots, human struggle in factories and internets. With science, we enable pro-bots. Pro-bots are robots with positive purposes like service and search. Welcome to Tech Links! From this to these. Newsflash! Machines start to think. Let's look at the origins of self-acting machines called automata to better understand the present and future of AI. Here is the true story of automata to AI in seven links. We start with clocks and caps. 1. Faith In the past, there are machines at places where people pray. Like magic, this machine self-opens Greek temple doors. Later, Medieval machines like these, self-ringing bell clocks, tell people when to start and stop work. Complex clocks with moving automata are the pride of cities of the Middle Ages. Gears and a secret component drives the automata of showy city clocks. The secret to self-moving machines are round-teeted gears and squish circle-shaped caps. Amazing! Here are more examples of more Middle Ages automata. Next, the CAM idea controls church bells. The pegs program which bells will play when. 2. Fun Smart people make machines that play and entertain. Imagine all the mechanical controls needed so machines like this can make music. Clever animal automatons like this duck eat and even pretend to poop. Wow! This automata writes by itself. Notice the old style pen. The user can program which letters the machines will write. This player piano uses cam-like tabs to control the keys. Self-acting machines can do more than just play. 3. Factory At first, People make machines for power. Next, machines are strong and smart enough to do repeating work. Here are other examples. Later, people design machines to pick and place parts to make electronics. With computers, People control machines like robots to precision weld car frames. Today, 
robots put products together too. Robots also move objects all around. Robot-like drones can even fly. They can deliver what we buy straight to our homes. Cobots and Cyber People Systems are all about humans and robots working together. Four, four. There is something within our creative souls that drives humans to design robots that look like and act like us. Robot hands and arms are more reliable than human muscle-based movements. Our robots mimic human muscles. Some robots can even walk and run. People make robots with sensors that are like human senses. Robots have chips for brains and software for minds. In the past, people write step-by-step -step software to control each separate robot action. Today, machine learning software enables machines to self-teach. Machines make self-decisions based on deluges of info data. Also, there is something called deep learning. This is where machines learn based on the model of the interlinked human brain. 5. Films The word robot means hard work or self-labor. It comes from this play. In this early film, greedy humans and grim robots cause trouble. The theme is to balance head, hands, and heart. Often, movies play on the fear people have on robots. In this movie, skin-covered metal frame monsters have cyber brains. Their job? Terminate people. In this movie, the robot, Evil Ultron, is smart, strong, and flies fast. In this movie, worker robots revolt against human bosses. The movie, Ex Machina, on AI robot struggle with self-awareness. Films show us the terrors and triumphs of our possible futures with robots. What is the reality of our robots today? 6. For now. AI bots sort mail, search internets, and simplify directions. Service bots serve customers like answering questions and making coffee. Some AI bots work in our homes. Chef bots cook meals. Cleaner bots clean up after us. To assist human surgeons, AI doc bots can perform precise surgery. AI medical experts diagnose sickness too. GI Joe AI bots do dangerous jobs like bomb disposal. Farm bots help human farmers plant seeds, care for plants, and pick the fruits and veggies. Today, AI bots do single domain tasks. What is next? 7. Future What is the near future for our AI bots and us? Will bots be self-thinking and more general purpose? Will chip transistors link human-like brain connections? Like Dr. Frankenstein ended up with a monster, there are cautions for us as we enable enhanced AI bots. As positives, AI bots can help humans care for our home planet. What if we teach our robot creations our basic human values? What will be the results if we don't? Imagine AI bots as global poverty busters by smoothing income and access inequalities. May our AI bots enable global peace and not world wars with swarms of cyber soldiers. To close, our story of self-acting machines start at church clocks and bells. Next, people make automata to entertain us. Later, controlled machines power factories to make things. People make robots that look and act like us. Films highlight human fears of robots' rise that cause humanity's demise. Today, self-acting machines work with humans. As future machines get smarter and more AI self-aware, how 
do humans adapt? We learn automata origins to better understand emerging AI robots and the impacts on us. Without networks, digital devices stand alone, like islands in isolation. With science, electronics interlink into worldwide nets of empowering information. Welcome to Tech Links of Networks. Today's World Wide Web was not the first global network. Roman roads linked Europe and Africa. Silk roads connected Asia and Europe. Wind-powered ships once sailed around the world trading silver, sugar, and spices. Today, our tech nets connect through time, from wires to Wi-Fi. Let's start with posted papers. This king started the Royal Mail Service. At first, it is free to send letters and packages. Only the receiver has to pay. Later, this guy is the first U.S. postmaster. He organized the post network complete with weekly mail wagons. The U.K. made the first stamps where senders pay up front. Common post bin and mailboxes show how wide the mail network is. For a time, fast horse and single riders enable the Pony Express mail across the USA. The days of Pony Express ended with the next network. 2. Trains This guy puts a steam engine on iron wheels. Sadly, it fails because the rails break. Next, people make stronger rails. There is a race to find the best train engine. This guy wins with his train called Rocket. Soon, networks of train tracks spread across UK and Europe. Later, trains run across huge countries and connect the biggest continents. Next, what is wanted are ways to send more messages. 3. Telegraphs Wires on poles run next to the train tracks. Telegraphs send signals to keep trains from crashing into each other. The wires link batteries in two of these. Messages are sent one alphabet letter at a time. The person at one end taps on and off patterns for each other. Electricity flows through the wire to the other end. The E patterns turn an electromagnet on and off. This makes dots and dashes that the operator writes down as messages. Telegraph wires connect UK and USA across the Atlantic Ocean. Later, telegraph network wires stretch around the world to places like India and Australia. The next network flies through the air. 4. Radio When electricity flows, it makes a magnet around the wire. Quickly changing flows makes radio waves. People talk or sing into mics. Sounds changes into radio waves that are sent into space. We have radio wave receivers in our homes and cars. In World War II, leaders used radio networks to talk directly to their people. Daily, radio networks also guide thousands of planes worldwide. Because radios use sound waves to send signals. Radios are wireless. The next network is about wires that connect people in private conversations. 5. Telephone Phones change voices into E patterns. Phones send signals over wires and then change them back into sounds. Webs of wires on poles connect people inside cities. At first, people, then machines switch or route our phone calls from senders to receivers. Then, networks of phone wires connect people around the world. Later, cell phones are invented. They use radio waves to send and receive phone calls. There are networks or cells of connected signal towers and ground stations. 
like cyber neurons, they link global smartphones. Radio waves also send our calls to satellites in space. They bounce our calls and connect with people worldwide. The next network interlinks info. 6. Internet It is awesome how the internet connects billions of devices worldwide. Over the internet, we send our sounds, sights, and surfs. Also, like wallless malls and global markets that never closes, the internet connects buyers and sellers around the world. The internet links global scientists to share ideas to improve the world. Also, the internet and World Wide Web's entertain us. We share social events, esports, and selfies. There are billions of internet ebooks and videos too. Wow! Think of how cyber mountains of digital data are hyperlinked to enable online searches. Not all of the net is linked by wires. 7. Wi Fi. Wi Fi is wireless tech that connects our digital gadgets to internet gates called hotspot access points. Inside our electronic devices, Wi Fi software splits our cyber data into bite sized packets. Tiny but powerful Wi Fi chips sends our digital data packets as personal radio waves. Wi Fi routers receive our separate digital packets. Like a cyber post office, the router sends our digital data along the internet. With our own unique path, our signals travel over billions of possible cyber connections to reach our receivers. Also, we are at the start of the epic IoT, Internet of Things Epoch. Every day, more and more standalone objects get cyber lives. Wi Fi chips, like a pinch of life giving pixie dust, connect objects as self aware bits to the exponentially expanding global internet of things. To close, people send handwritten notes to each other using postal networks. Next, iron tracks and trains connect people and products together. Telegraph wires and signals keep trains safe. Also, People use telegraphs to send dot and dash messages to each other one letter at a time. Wireless radio waves send signals to lots of people at the same time. Next, phone networks of wires and switches route private phone calls between people worldwide. Today, the internet links electronic devices into global networks for search and share of digital data. Wi-Fi radio waves connect our objects to the internet as we are on the go. Our internet nodes look like a galaxy of stars. They are all networked together to enable and enlighten our lives. Will the use of networks from wires to Wi-Fi with IoT super connectivity make our lives easier? Over entertain us or energize our personal creativities? close? In vast dark space, sunlight brightens our blue pixel planet and enables our lives. Tooltips create cutting-edge tech. Books store what we know and springboards us to new knowledge discoveries. People make powered machines that energize our world. Today, we have everyday objects that we produce in factories with interchangeable parts. Alexa, Siri, what are the positive impacts of robots in our world? Huge! Global networks link humans with billions of digital devices. What an awesome opportunity to improve lives! With urgency, we understand the science that underpins our lives. See the catalog for more Alfred books. Printed copies are also available on Amazon. Over 4 million free Alfred ebooks and videos have been downloaded. Subscribe now!